The Last Starfighter, 1984, and directed by Nick Castle, who just happened to be the original Michael Myers in the 1978 Halloween. But he seems like quite a nice chap after all, as this is a good fun, good time movie. I hadn't had many people ask me to take a look at it, but when they did, I thought, I've already seen The Last Starfighter, I didn't like it much, but I took a look at the trailer and realised I've been confusing it with another film. So here we are, a review of the 2024 4K from Arrow Films of The Last Starfighter. It had an estimated budget of $15 million and grossed to the worldwide box office $29 million. It has a running time of 1 hour and 41 minutes, an aspect ratio of approximately 2.40 to 1, and it comes with three soundtrack options. I think all three of the soundtracks are encoded within DTS, so even though there's a 2.0, that will be the original Dolby Stereo Matrix 4 track, but encoded into DTS, you still get the same ProLogic effect when watching that or listening to that. Then there's a 5.1, which is a modern sounding soundtrack. It had more depth to it than the 2.0, but the one that I went for was a 4.1, and that is taken from the 70 millimeter tracks because the last Starfighter did get a 70 millimeter blow up, so that meant six track magnetic sound. And how that was configured, I believe, is three stereo channels at the front plus two bass between the center channel and the left and the center channel and the right, you've got two bass channels. And that seems to be piped to the subwoofer. And my word, you get deep bass in that. It's actually far better than the 5.1 for bass. Perhaps not the overall sound clarity, but the bass, which is what I tend to like and why I've got a THX Ultra sound system in here. So that was the most impressive. And I did a few tests within some of the bassier shots within The Last Starfighter, and certainly the better bassier soundtrack as far as I'm concerned. But good surround sound, mono surround sound on it, of course, too. But the surround sound on the 5.1, from what I heard, did seem to be a little more impressive. So it's going to be different on different systems, and a lot will depend on how you like your bass and how big your subwoofer is. So the sound is certainly an interesting aspect of this 4K release. And the picture, well, Arrow always seem to produce the best work when it comes to pictures. Now this was done at Restore Studios over here in London, and they do seem to be around the pinnacle of the production houses able to do these cine to video transfers and mastering. This one's no exception. So another exceptional release from Arrow in terms of image and sound. I often find myself wondering now just how is it these 35 millimeters look so good? And I think it comes down to the way they were shot. And this one is a full frame anamorphic 35 millimeter. There are some dubious sequences here and there. And I know I've been through this several times, but for those who don't watch my channel, regularly the opening titles they're inserted optically and that basically means two elements of film merged into one third element of film so you've got the increasing film grain and the degradation of the clarity that's how that works and because this is a conventional film there's a lot of practical effects in here and of course they're done optically so some are better than others but this film is notable i didn't know anything about it but it was obvious looking at it it had a similar look to tron and therefore this was using early computer graphics now you have to be prepared for that i think if you haven't seen it already because some may look at this and think well this looks like a cartoon this sequence what's happened that's essentially what it is it's early Early computer graphics as I said and they weren't really quite up to producing the sort of modern day CGI that came a few years later but this one was sort of a trailblazer that led the way for bringing in the CGI that we know today so you might find that some of those shots look a little odd but if you accept them in a historical context then I think you'll find them interesting and more than acceptable. I like the look of them. I rather got into it, but then I always like the look of Tron. Now, as far as I'm concerned, this is what I call a kiddie film, but there's a couple of sequences in it that are not exactly kiddie film material, and that's why it has the 12 certification over here in the UK. 
There's no Blu-ray in this pack, just the 4K, but it is possible to see elements of what would be on the Blu-ray in the extras, as there are plenty of clips. And from that, I could tell immediately the colours are wrong. This one looks like a film, and in fact, I would imagine this is better than the general release prints that we would have seen in 1984. Not the 70mm blow-ups or the master prints, perhaps, but still does look beautiful. I haven't watched all the extras yet, but what I have seen is interesting. If it was 2020, I suppose it was done in the first full year of COVID-19, so all done remotely over Zoom or something. But the booklet, I presume, is the same as went out with that Blu-ray, with a couple of modifications on the back. But it's to say that it was mastered in 4K where it was done and everything else. So interesting information within the extras and quite a lot of them. But a nice pack. I got it from HMV for $21.99. I couldn't find it in the store when I went in. So in the end, I ordered it through their online shop. And I think if you're into science fiction and you've seen The Last Starfighter, you'll know what to expect. But if you haven't, just be prepared the sort of substandard, I suppose, computer graphics, be prepared for those. And I think you should have a good time with this load of nonsense. This kiddie load of nonsense is a bit adult in places, perhaps, but I thought it was terrific fun. And my wife and I in here had a great time with it last night. Right, as I record this, we have a BFCC light coming up. That's British Film Collectors Convention light. It's next Sunday, 29th of September 2024, and it's been organised for us by Sarah from Talking Pictures, also known as Renowned Films, at the St Albans County Club. And it's right next to the St Albans train station, but also has a huge car park on site for anyone who wishes to come along. It's running from 10am till 4pm. Tickets cost £10. I'll leave a link to the renowned films Talking Pictures website in the description below for anyone wishing to purchase a ticket in advance. I think there will be quite a few tickets available on the day, so there shouldn't be a problem. It's just we're having to be a little careful because it's a smaller venue and we don't want to exceed the permitted limit of persons on site at any one time. We have divided it up into two time slots, but just get a morning ticket. I don't think we're going to be so overrun that anyone's asked to leave by the afternoon. And generally people come into these things for a few hours, buy the films they want and then make their way home. So there shouldn't be a problem there. It's £10 admission, 10 o'clock till 4 o'clock in the afternoon. All day film shows, I hope. Mark Norton's got plenty of Super 8s ready for us. But we're also going to be using Keith Wilton's 35mm portable, the Chinese machine that he got years ago for use at the BFCC, but then upgraded to the Zen and, and I purchased the original one off him. So Noel Pratt has done some work on that for us in recent years, and also lately Ben Wales, who's been trying to get full Dolby sound operating from it. So hopefully we'll be re-premiering that great little projector next week when we have a nine foot wide screen available to show the films on. So not the usual 24 foot wide screen, it won't fit into the St Albans County Club. So anyway, hopefully I'll see a few of you there next week. Renowned films who have got loads of films to sell. Classic home cinema always have a great stand. And for the first time, Film is Fabulous are going to be there as a film dealer. This has happened much quicker than I thought it was going to, that we can have Film is Fabulous there as a dealer. And it's a venture that was designed to save a film. That side of it has been hugely successful already. But another side to Film is Fabulous was to find any missing films and television episodes and get them back to the copyright holders with the provisos that they will be seen. And that side of it is, well, that's been huge. And at the moment, Paul Vanessis, John Franklin, Professor Justin Smith at the De Montfort University, they have got a few episodes from the 1950s series that are in dire need of restoration. But hopefully I'm able to insert a cutaway here to Paul Vanessis, who recorded a video of these missing episodes in question. Some of the reels have got very bad vinegar syndrome, and I thought you'd find it interesting to see this. I'll leave a link to the full video in the description below, but because these particular reels in such desperate need of transferring now. It probably won't be possible to get every last frame off, and indeed, a couple of these reels are so bad, may not be possible to do them at all. But because it's so 
urgent that these are transferred. Film is Fabulous have a GoFundMe page. They're trying to raise £3,000 to get these over to Restore Studios to get them transferred and effectively capable of being seen again. So I'll leave a link to that as well as Paul's video and the Renowned Films Talking Pictures website in the description below so you can all have a look and hopefully glean some more information as to what is coming up and keep an eye on what is happening with the Film is Fabulous team and how they are actually saving film, getting them seen again. Anyway, I think that brings us to the end. I hope you found it all interesting. If you did, please give it a like and perhaps consider subscribing so I'll be encouraged to carry on creating content like this. Until the next video, bye-bye for now.